Hi, Debbie Lichter here with Free From Food Addiction and The Congruence Code. So this is video one of a three-part video series around how to stop feeling anxious. I get this request so much that I just thought, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to create this three-part training for you so that you can have tools and you can have tools in bite-sized chunks so that you can really integrate this stuff and implement it in your own life. And I want to hear how these tools are working for you. So let's dive right in. So the first, the first thing that I really want to talk about, you know, because I was really thinking about, well, what are the main reasons why someone gets anxious in the first place? And what I identified were three primary categories. And so each one of these videos is going to be talking about one of those categories and then sharing with you what to do about it. So the first category, and tell me if you relate to this, is resisting feeling certain emotions, certain intense emotions. Um, this used to happen for me when um, I remember so clearly um, when I was, you know, running the health club um, that I worked at and I would be having this huge fight with my boyfriend on the phone on the way I was driving into work. And we were, it was just, it was really, really toxic, really horrible. He wasn't toxic. I was toxic because I was super insane at the time. But as soon as I, like for me, I thought that emotions were messy, that you should not bring your emotions to work, you know, that you should be somebody who keeps it together. And I certainly had, you know, I was the leader. I wanted to walk in. I wanted people to see me a certain way. And so emotions and being messy was not a part of that. So I remember distinctly as my hand would reach for the door handle of the health club, and as I'd open it up, I remember thinking to myself, you're on. And I literally would just like snap into a new mode that whatever was going on would just get like pushed somewhere deep inside me and I would go in and now I was all about you and how I can help you and support you and what do you need and, you know, completely like forgetting about whatever was going on down deep. And I thought that that was a really healthy way of coping with that. And what I didn't realize is that that constant gnawing feeling of anxiety and overwhelm, of impending doom, of like something is about to happen and just like waiting for the other shoe to drop, I didn't realize all of that stuff was happening because of this handy little thing that I was doing calling, called like not feeling your emotions. And, and, and even rewinding further back from that, uh, growing up, I had um, played a lot of sports and I played, you know, I was pretty good at softball and I took it really, really seriously and I was really hard on myself and there was so much frustration and embarrassment and, you know, all this stuff, all this pent up emotion and, and resentment that was going on inside of me that I didn't want to feel. And well, you know, it also turned into chronic pain and I was feeling anxiety and chronic pain. So if you're somebody who struggles with anxiety, chronic pain, gut issues, um, you know, like there's tons and tons of addictions. There's tons and tons of ways that not feeling our feelings can show up. And this is so great, big, huge. And I see this really affecting so many folks. I was speaking with a woman the other day and she was saying that she was um, attending a seminar and the seminar leader started bringing up all this stuff and all these different things started happening to her. She got really, really overwhelmed with emotion. She didn't feel like it was the appropriate place for her to just like completely spin out and so she tried to bottle it up and it made her really anxious and she felt uncomfortable she had a horrible time so just notice if you're hearing yourself in any of these stories and if you are then I first of all want you to know that you are not alone oh my goodness I feel like this is one of the biggest biggest challenges that so many people have and sometimes you know that you're not wanting to feel your emotions and sometimes you don't even know that there's a deeper emotion that's going on that you're not 
wanting to feel. And that's actually what I've realized happens more and more. So, you know, you're, you become so used to not feeling those emotions, not being in touch with that, having whatever story you have around it not being okay to feel or not feeling safe to feel that you just immediately go into anxiety without even the moment of realizing I'm not wanting to feel these feelings. And so in order to address this, if you're somebody who struggles with feeling, struggles with feeling your emotion, or you're struggling with anxiety and you wonder if maybe this is one of the things that's going on for you, then here is the tool for you. You want to just Get real with what you feel. And in order to do that, you got to first stop. And this is hard. When you're in the middle of anxiety or feeling anxious, it's like your mind's going a million miles an hour. You're thinking 25 steps ahead, creating all these possible scenarios, all these worst case possible scenarios usually. And it's hard to just stop and to actually ease back. Because everything in your mind and your impulse in that moment is like, I've got to do something. I've got to figure it out. And so, but I'm telling you, if you can just stop and let yourself get real with what you feel. And the way that I do that and the way that I guide others in doing this as well is to just pause and to allow yourself to settle into the feeling that's happening underneath the anxiety feeling. Typically, when you give yourself an opportunity to do that, you might be surprised by what you experience. I oftentimes, if I have done this in the past, I will come across loneliness, sadness, grief, things that I wasn't overtly thinking that I was even experiencing in that moment, and yet they're there. And when we can give ourselves, when we can honor ourselves and our feelings and let ourselves go there and get real with what we feel, it's incredible how that can dissipate the emotion. I rarely find that anxiety is um, trying to cover up like... um, happiness (laughs) happiness <laughs> or joy or something like that. Sometimes, sometimes it can. But more often times than not, there's an uncomfortable feeling and maybe happiness and joy is uncomfortable for you. But um, I oftentimes find that there's an uncomfortable negative feeling uh, that, or, or we perceive it to be negative, that we are resisting feeling because it doesn't feel safe to feel, it feels vulnerable to feel, maybe we feel inadequate or stupid for having that feeling, or we don't understand it and we make it, we make it mean that we're weak or something like that, and so we don't want to feel it. And if you can give yourself the gift of that, oh my gosh, just this this week, just practice that, practice doing that, practice being more real with what you feel and just see what opens up for you. Please post a comment below. I want to know how this tool works for you and definitely stick around for the next video that is coming at you because um, there's so much more here and I want you to get more tools. I want you to really get supported in this way. I will also leave a link below if you are somebody who gets chronic panic attacks or you're somebody who just feels like you're really ready to stop feeling anxious and, and to stop holding back in general. So you can just put yourself out there. You can shine your light. You can help more people. You can feel free. You can just be you. I will leave another link below. Let's hop on a call. I would love to help you with just getting the clarity around your next steps to doing that because it is your time. If you're getting that call, then it means that the universe is tapping you on the shoulders because it is your time to do just that.